Welcome to Astronomer Cloud. Whether you're new to Airflow, migrating from an existing Airflow, or an existing Astronomer product, you're in the right place. Astro lets you create Airflow environments with the click of a button, gives you monitoring and alerting, and allows you to spend more time thinking about your data and less time thinking about the infrastructure you need to manage Airflow. We have multiple deployment methods available to match what your organization needs. Astro Cloud UI provides a single pane of glass to observe and manage all of your deployments and workflows. First, let's go over a few terms. At this point, you've established an organization and should either be a member or an owner. You can think of that organization as your company or group, depending on your purposes. An organization has billing, authentication methods, and access controls. You can easily configure teams and invite other members to your organization in the Astro UI or with the Astro CLI. Depending on what deployment method you've selected, you may have a cluster that resides in your own cloud provider accounts. Workspaces or bounding boxes for Airflow deployments inclu can include a team or set of users with their own access controls. You can easily add or modify members in specific workspaces, and workspaces have API tokens, which can be used for CI/CD and creating ephemeral deployments or preview environments. With the Airflow UI, and just want to get to writing SQL code or using specific operators, we offer the Cloud IDE. With the Cloud IDE, in just a few quick moments, you can turn your business logic into an Airflow DAG. You can create a project, add a pipeline, and start adding any of the many Airflow operators or just get to writing SQL or Python. You can commit your work with the click of a button to a GitHub repo to keep all of your Airflow workflows in sync. Beyond that, simple to create an Airflow deployment. To create a deployment, all you need to set is a name and to pick your cluster type, cloud, and region. You'll pick an Airflow version. Air Astronomer has day zero support for new Airflow versions, as well as immediate bug fixes and security patches on top of open source Airflow. Upgrading in place to a new version is as simple as pushing new code. Astronomer offers a choice of executor between Celery and Kubernetes. Celery lets you fine tune a mini compute cluster while Kubernetes offers more isolation for your tasks and fine grained per task resource control. You can pick your size of Airflow Scheduler, which is the component responsible for orchestrating your tasks and managing dependencies. And if you're in Celery, you can adjust your base worker resources. Workers are where your tasks run and can auto scale as you configure during periods of high task volume. Also for Celery, you can add specific worker queues which give you an easy way to, to add dedicated infrastructure pools for specific tasks to run on. Worker queues can scale to zero when not in use. Before we wait for this deployment to create, let's check out some of the other stuff available in Astro. The next thing we'll talk about is installing and utilizing the Astro CLI. The Astro CLI allows you to develop your Airflow project locally, push code, and manage deployments. You may already have the Astro CLI. It's easy to install the Astro CLI to your operating system using any of the following methods. I'm on a Mac, so I'll use this one with Homebrew. It's easy to install the Astro CLI. I do already have it installed, so this will just check for an update. Using the Astro CLI, I can make a new project. And quickly initialize a new Airflow project using Astro Dev init. This creates the skeleton of a new project, which we can observe here. Some of the important files that you'll need to know about are going to be requirements.txt. This is where you can manage Airflow uh, Python dependencies. Packages.txt is where you can manage Airflow system dependencies. Of course, your DAGs folder is where you put your DAGs. Tests is where you can put unit tests. And the Docker file is where you can configure the actual Airflow system image that will be deployed to production and used for local development. To start developing locally, all you need to do is type astro dev start. This will take a little bit to run, but it effectively it will create that Docker file and bring up the local stack. This is going to be the exact same image 
that gets deployed to your production so you know that your dev and your uh, prod will be in parity. Now that that's up, we can switch back to our web browser and log in. The default credentials are admin admin. Sometimes you need to enter them. Uh, and you can see we already provided you with two example DAGs. Let's do a quick crash course of Airflow. If you're already familiar with Airflow, you can of course skip over this. In Airflow, your workflows are represented by Python files. While these are Python files, it's better to think about them as configuration files rather than scripts. There are a number of ways to instantiate a DAG, but here's one of them with this at DAG annotation. DAGs require a DAG ID, which in this instance is the name of the function, a schedule, such as daily. You can also give a cron string here, um, and a start date. DAGs, of course, have tasks. This is one way to create tasks. This is creating a Python operator, so they'll just be running this Python code. Tasks have relations to each other. And this is easily visible on the graph tab. This is a simple DAG with just each task, task going to the next. Next, we can actually turn our DAG on and navigate over to the grid view. We can watch our DAG proceed. It's already started. Airflow is first going to consider the DAG run and then attempt to start scheduling these tasks. They've already finished. You can see details on the DAG itself, such as when it started, how it's running and its duration, things like that. And also you can click into the tasks themselves to see uh, more details what was rendered if you're using Jinja templates, XCOMs, which is a way to communicate across tasks and uh, send data, um, and additionally the logs for the task. If you ever need to rerun a task, you can hit clear task. You can select different options here to clear, for instance, downstream things or past runs. Um, you can, of course, also mark tasks as failed or successful if you manually needed to intervene. Things worth initially mentioning, Airflow does have a REST API, which you can read about here. You can browse DAG runs, task instances, see them at scale. You can add filters to filter down for specific things. Additionally, you can look at variables, which is keys and values in Airflow, as well as connections, which are is Airflow's ability to connect to other systems such as Snowflake, or your cloud provider resources such as S3 and AWS. Beyond that, Airflow has pools, which are specific dedicated concurrency for tasks. Many people don't need to use this, but for instance, if you have a database that you don't want, you know, more than 10 queries running at once across all your DAGs, you can use a pool and assign tasks to that pool so that your database doesn't get overwhelmed with concurrency. Other things worth mentioning in the local dev experience there's Astro Run, which lets you run a specific DAG just in your terminal without the Airflow UI. This is helpful to, for debugging. There's Astro Dev PyTest. This will run some local PyTests, including your own unit tests in a specific container. There's also Astro Dev Parse. This will parse your DAGs and look for um, any linting issues that may prevent them from being imported by Airflow. To deploy your local changes of your project to your Airflow running in Astro, it's very simple. Go to a CLI and you type Astro Login. This will open up a browser window, which you can log in as normal. You'll get a success message and your CLI will be authenticated. From there, we can do Astro Workspace list. We can see all the workspaces that we have. If you need to, you can type Astro Workspace Switch to switch between the workspaces. You can additionally use Astro Deployment List to see all the deployments we have. We can use Astro Deploy to deploy to one of those deployments. All right, now that our deployment is finished, we can navigate over to the Astronomer UI. One of the mo most important tabs that you can pay attention to is the Analytics tab. It's good to check in on this 
every couple days or as you're developing your DAGs. You can both get a, get a uh, high-level overview of how your DAGs and your tasks are doing. You can see any failures at a glance across the whole instance. But more importantly, you can check out your worker cluster and your schedulers. This is very important for right-sizing both your worker cluster and your schedulers to see if they need to be either scaled up or scaled down. This is one of the most important things in terms of cost control that you can do in Astronomer. If you notice that your scheduler really is uh, doesn't have anything to do, you can likely lower it to a smaller instance size. Same with workers. Beyond that, we have the Logs tab. You can fetch your scheduler logs. This is important to see how long your DAGs are taking to parse in the production airflow. Um, additionally, if you need to, you can see trigger logs. That's for asynchronous operators. Asynchronous operators are also a great way to uh, control costs. They run in a much more lightweight fashion uh, compared to their synchronous counterparts. They're worth checking out. And you can also check the web server logs. Beyond that, you can set environment variables for your deployment. You can set things like airflow configs here, such as uh, airflow core parallelism. This sets the global parallelism for your whole instance. You may want to increase it from the default. You can look in our docs on other types of airflow configurations. Also worth noting, you can set airflow variables here. Those are key values, as I mentioned previously, and you can set airflow connection details here. If you ever need to edit your instance details, you can go to the details tab. Go to the edit details button, and of course you can resize things, change uh, you know, your description, your executor, anything like that. Additionally, we have the DAGs page, which can uh, let you, at a really high level, look at all the DAGs in the whole workspace that you have access to, and of course drill down to, into them in much the same way that you could in Airflow, without ever opening the Airflow UI. Beyond that, of course, you can get to the Airflow UI and uh, see this DAG with the Open an Airflow button, or head to Deployments, click the tile, and click Open Airflow. So open the same Airflow UI that you have access to locally. Beyond Airflow, there are a number of very important links available at the home to your workspace. You have our Docs page, our Learn tab, and the Academy, as well as the Registry. Our Docs has an abundance of information available. Also down here, note that you can book office hours with your Astro Data Engineers. You can watch our webinars, and you can actually check the status page of Astro. Additionally, if you scroll down, there's a mailing list that you can sign up for, for developer updates. Additionally, in the Astro UI itself, there's a docs link. You can submit a support request to our support team, book office hours, and view the status. Our Learn tab has many tutorials that we're constantly adding to and additionally integration guides on how to integrate with different systems. The Astronomer, Astronomer Academy has various videos and courses and certifications that you have access to, and you're recommended to check it out. The Astronomer Registry is the home of all Airflow providers and all Airflow operators. This is always a great place to look at if you're interested in documentation or um, what types of operators are available to you. If you ever need to remember how to contact our support team, the best ways are either in this question mark menu in the top right, or you can go to our documentation, and we have information on how to submit a support request. In addition, if you ever want to know what's new with Astro, you can always look down here at the release notes. Those are also available on our website and our documentation and should be regularly emailed out. If you ever need to talk to an Astro data engineer, please book office hours. Those are available regularly, and you can discuss things like new workloads, how to integrate with different systems. If things are broken or you have issues, please submit a support request so our support team can help you. This brief walkthrough, please remember you can always join the Airflow open source community or check out the Astronomer Forums. 
feel free to reach out to us and we hope you enjoy your experience.